um, I uh, I woke up uh, this morning with a with a really really bad cold. Uh, so uh, I am going to uh, um, cut my talk a little short. Um, uh, so I'd like to again thank everyone for coming out. Um, I'd like to thank Patty for uh, um, for her patience and uh, encouraging words. Um, Connor for his uh, technical skills and uh, encouraging words too. And uh, of course, Lama for keeping um, all this together along with uh, so many other volunteers. Um, uh, I would also like to welcome every, um, any uh, first timers um, as we had a first timer um, to uh, to this uh, program. Um, about two years ago, my wife and I moved uh, to Placer County and um, had the good fortune of finding this place uh, um, on the web. Um, but I sort of kind of loitered out on Zoom for for a couple months uh, before before uh, revealing myself, you know, committing myself. Um, and uh, um, last year, um, I uh, became a member and also uh, took refuge uh, with Lama um, Jimpa. Um, I had this big, big presentation planned out, and uh, um, now I have to cut and snip. Um, so my talk uh, is um, um, roughly about my my Dharma path. Um, uh, and so. Um, um, also, part of this program will be um, uh, we'll be showing some slides. Um, I, I titled this uh, this talk uh, um, "Stops Along the Way," um, which I was thinking mostly about uh, my my slideshow um, about uh, literally, you know, stops along a trip. Um, but then I got thinking about my my actual practice or lack thereof um, stops along the way, and that uh, my practice um, it's not sort of like a linear progression. Um, it's uh, more more like an EKG graph, you know, kind of up and down, up and down. Um, you know, you have your highs. Um, you know, you meet a, a high lama, you you know receive a teaching or initiation, um, and then there's um, there's the you know the lows um, where you know you feel um, like your practice is on life support, um, and so there are a couple ways that I've discovered. Um, that uh, keep me engaged um, in my practice um, when when I when I'm in those those lows, and um, uh, like to you know um, talk about those. Um, also, um, I um, I also also would like to uh, talk about uh, a. Tibetan term called a uh, Tibetan word called tendril, um, which is um, a Tibetan translation of a um, uh, Sanskrit um, word meaning um, meaning uh, dependent arising. Um, um, so uh, it breaks down to uh, in terms of um, the definition the, the ten the first syllable um, um, means uh, to to depend and drill the second uh, means connection or relationship um, it also has many different layered meanings um, again the, the prime one is uh, dependent origination um, it could be used to describe uh, karma and uh, and and, and and emptiness. Um, 
and there are, like I said, there are many, many different meanings. Um, more of a, on a colloquial side, um, it means um, auspicious, um, serendipity, um, like an uh, auspicious occasion. Um, I remember Lama talking about um, how um, uh, Allen Ginsberg uh, met his um, met his root teacher uh, Chogun and Chupa um, while they were both trying to hail a a cab in New York City. Um, kind of reminds me of the uh, the story about the the sea dwelling animal who um, who comes up for air uh, once a year and uh, um, you know comes up and uh, his head, uh, you know, um, surfaces in, in a yoke, you know, that's in terms of uh, the uh, probability of, of um, you know, events happening. Um, uh, this couple, two different, uh, um, uh, I found these off of uh, the, actually the lion, Lion's Roar site, okay? Um, how dare they? Uh, um, so one uh, it describes uh, the um, tendril as uh, the nature of phenomena and how it relates to each. It has connections that are both mathematical and magical. Um, and a, a Hindu perspective, um, everything in the universe is synchronized. The actions, thoughts one performs does not end with them. They bring energy and cannot be destroyed. They get stored in the cosmos. Um, so the reason why I, I'm actually bringing up this, uh, this uh, line of uh, talk um, is that um, I, uh, um, Hmm. Okay, uh, I, I kind of label these things as fun facts um, because uh, I have had a lot of occurrences in terms of dates that um, are just kind of interesting. Um, so um, I will reveal those uh, uh, later. Um, so in terms of going back to, um, to my... Uh, my um, flatlining uh, practice. Um, there are a couple ways that uh, um, again engage me in in the Dharma. Um, uh, basically, there, there are two that uh, resonate most with me. Uh, one is um, uh, being being of service to to people that are in need. Um, and the other is uh, um, animal welfare. Um, so, in terms of the uh, the being of service, um, one one particular event uh, I think actually influenced me to to um, to begin this. Sort of spiritual journey, um, and um, it resonates resonates with me, uh, you know, just as strongly, if not stronger, um, today. Um, that that uh, one event is actually it's one event, although it's kind of ludicrous to say that one event or the first time you step into a a temple that that's you know the beginning of your journey. Um, but um, for this lifetime, uh, um, um, happened um, when um, uh, when I volunteered for a uh, a nonprofit that uh, that provided uh, um, home repairs uh, for low income, elderly, and disabled people. Um, the, the the actual name of the uh, the um, organization is called Rebuilding Together, um, and I've been doing it for um, 
probably about 25 years and um, actually did some work uh, yesterday, maybe too much work uh, um, that has left me in this state. Um, it, yeah, it just, I don't know, just, I'm, maybe I'm just hardwired for that. I just, you know, to, uh, you know, it's, it's also, it's gratifying, but um, it's, you know, you're fulfilling something that, that someone, you know, needs. Um, and that, uh, um, yeah, I just, uh, um, it's very, very, very important to me. Um, and so shortly after that, um, I, um, you know, I started exploring, um, looking for, uh, you know, ways. Um, so one day I just opened up a yellow page and uh, found, uh, you know, a temple that was uh, near me. Um, uh, so, um, as I said, I'm gonna make this short because <laughs> I don't wanna go too in depth. Um, um so in terms of uh my my tendril experiences um a lot of them uh again are um are based on 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 dates on the actually birth dates um and again they're they're i have not made or tried to make any sense of it, um, but uh, I don't know. I thought that might be interesting. Um, so, uh, fact number one, or fun fact number one: uh, my mom and uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama uh, shared uh, a birthday. Um, I know the calendars are are different, but uh, you know this is my talk, so uh, um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, fun fact number two, um, I was born in the year that His Holiness fled India, I mean, uh, uh, Tibet. Uh, fun fact number three, um, I had the great honor of meeting His Holiness on my birthday one time. <laughs> um, fact, fun fact number four, um, my my first uh, Tibetan teacher um, was uh, Archer Rinpoche, um, who um, uh, founded a uh, a Buddhist center in uh, Mill Valley called the uh, um, Tibetan Center for Compassion and Wisdom. Um, you know, the first time I met him uh, or was introduced to him was at a, um, a Japanese Jodo Shinshu temple, um, which. Uh, which he was a guest speaker one one uh, one day, um, and so you know after hearing him, it was like you know turning on the light switch. Um, so the first time that uh, I was part of a, a celebrate a birthday celebration uh, for him was on the date that my my dad died. Um, and so, uh, you know, just the, the, the metaphor of, you know, losing a father and also gaining a father. Um, Arja is uh, um, a term, uh, um, is a translation is father, um, as he's the incarnate of uh, the father of uh, Lama Tankaba. Um, and so, Again, you know, sort of, um, you know, sort of becoming, you know, like what are responsibilities of fathers of, you know, steering their, their children, you know, um, through life. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, um, and uh, last but not least, um, I think, uh, a month ago, uh, uh, Lama was talking about uh, Lama Tsongkhapa, and 
I decided to, uh, you know, do some more research on, on his history. And, uh, you know, I was, you know, scrolling through pages and uh, I find that uh, he was born on uh, the 25th day of the 10th month and which is, you know, my birthday. Uh, um, yeah, you know, I literally had to like I froze. It was like oh, wait, 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 twenty-five. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I, like I said, uh, you know, I have no idea what this means. Um, I think possibly for me, it sort of confirms uh, that uh, I that I'm on the right path. Um, so. Um, I think that's it. <laughs> um, so if, uh, I forgot, I forgot the popcorn, um, but, uh, um, so if you're, uh, up for seeing some slides for, uh, stops along the way, this is the premiere. By the way, I, I must warn you that um, um, there's some cheesy. Uh...
Control spoon too. <laughs> You had mentioned that the beginning of your journey, and I um, was uh, triggered by volunteering for the nonprofit Rebuilding Together, mm -hmm. and I wondered if you might talk about maybe the the state of mind you were in before going there and leading up to it. Um, I guess they were kind of the lean times, you know, um, just working and trying to make ends meet, um, you know, probably just focusing on yourself. Um, and so, you know, putting the focus on, you know, other than yourself. Um, you know, I think. Uh, that was, uh, you know, the motivation. Um, you know, I, I my memories are, are kind of uh, foggy, uh, so um, you know, I, I was raised a Catholic. Um, you know, did the the altar altar boy thing uh, for a while, um, and uh, just never resonated with me. You know the um, the Trinity, you know, the Father, Son, Spirit. Uh, um, I kind of have uh, trouble with uh, the three Buddha bodies too. Um, but <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it just I don't know if it was a spiritual midlife crisis or, or you know, um, you know, not being spiritual, you know, because the uh, um, you know, going to the church and all that uh, just had no meaning to me. Um, so, um, and also, you know, I get to do that, you know, also part of, you know, part of the Sangha, you know, with different projects, you know, that, that, that kind of, um, you know, definitely grat gratifying. Um, you know, it's kind of just, a, I don't know if it's, if I could say it's part of my practice or, um, but, uh... I have a question. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have the microphone. Okay. <laughs> so do I. Um, you said when there was an aha moment when you went to see that one teacher speak. Uh -huh. RJ? Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know his name. But do you remember what it was that happened? or what the talk was, or what, what? Right. Um, I was going to, uh, attending this, oh, I was a member um, of this uh, um, Jodo Shinshu temple. Um, I literally picked it out because it was within walking distance, you know, of, of where I lived, you know, so it wasn't uh, like I was investigating and I wasn't familiar with the different, uh, so many different types of schools. Um, and so I, I felt that, uh, their practice was kind of limiting, um, which, you know, may not, you know, comment on, on their practice, but on, on myself, you know, like sometimes the simplest things are, are the most profound. Um, so I, you know, again, I wasn't, you know, wasn't connecting with it and, uh, and so, you know, that one Sunday, you know, I was thinking about, you know, you know, trying something else and, uh, you know, unbeknownst to me, you know, um, Rinpoche uh, came as a guest speaker. Um, and, you know, it just seemed like, um, you know, possibly, you know, providing more answers, you know, to, to the questions that I had, you know, about life and, you know where I was going. Um, so uh, yeah, it was just you know kind of an impulse thing, um, not an impulse, but a, a very impactful. Um, you know, his, his 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 whole family came. 
um, you know, his, uh, um, you know, people he brought from, uh, from, you know, when he uh, fled to Tibet. Um, you know, he had only been in the country for about a year, I think. Um, and uh, I also say, you know, um, there were two life-changing occurrences that had me happened at the uh, Berkeley Buddhist Temple. And, uh, you know, one was meeting Rinpoche, and the other was uh, being introduced to my wife. Uh, so, <laughs> um, so I, I'm very uh, thankful and, uh, um, you know, of, of all the experiences I, I had there, too. Thanks for sharing your your journey. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you that I conjured, inspired by your photo of a little boy that was looking at himself in the mirror, uh -huh. sticking his tongue out. So you don't have to answer this question if you don't want to. But okay. <laughs> I wonder if you if you might have anything to say based on your personal experience about the idea that reality is um, both a reflection of yourself but also not, and to what extent. I don't know if you have any thoughts about that. Uh, it's funny because, uh, you know, like uh, all those pictures are just, you know, you know, some of my favorite, you know, images um, of that trip, you know, it wasn't, you know, pure documentation or, uh, you know, so I was actually um wondering whether to include that you know um but then looking at it you know seeing um you know the reflection and, and him and who's you know who's who um uh i i yeah you're you're way over my head uh, <laughs> 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 i'll open it up for discussion Thank you for your question. Hi, Paul. Thanks so much for sharing all of those images. They were wonderful. When you were on pilgrimage, um, can you talk a little bit about whether or not there was any kind of, I don't know, change in you after visiting all of these holy sites? What, did you feel that they were holy sites? Did you, you know, what was it like being on pilgrimage mm -hmm. for you? Uh, you know, I like history, you know, so, uh, you know, from a, an architectural or not uh, archaeological. Um, and I also like documenting things. Um, but um, it takes to, it takes a while for things to sink in um, to me. Um, so um, we were I, the pilgrimage. The the main um, Impetus for the pilgrimage was uh, the Kalachakra teachings in Bodh Gaya. Um, and uh, um, I was actually sick most of the time <laughs> while we were there. Um, but yeah, yeah, it, it, it takes takes time for me to, to process things. Um, it definitely, uh, you know, sort of maybe commit more, um, you know, to, to this process. Um, yeah.
Hippa, your talk um, and your slideshow oh, is just so amazing. I just wanted to say that that's how I felt watching it. And, um, and, and then also, I, I just so appreciate the way you answer our questions. Like, you know, like you really think about it. And, and I know that I just, that's an example to me. And even saying something simple like that's over my head, it's just like, oh yeah, you could say that next time. <laughs> you know, instead of trying to come up with something, that just being so true and real like you've been, and then sharing with such humility your, your, your trip that, that, that you took. And, and also how I liked how you said uh, how it takes a while for things to sink in. I, I think that's true for all of us in a certain way. I mean, our first experience is whatever it is, but then later, as we just get little glimpses, I think, later as time goes on. Mm -hmm. I remember when Kencha Rinpoche came here and, and he was walking away, walking out the door, and he, he grabbed a hold of you like a true friend. And I, I remember that. I remember that. So you have an impact on, mm -hmm. on, on all of us. I, I just would have. I'm so glad that you agreed to do this. <laughs> Thank you so much. Omo araya pasaya na ayindi. Om araya pasaya na ayindi.